morning, everyone. Welcome to BC310, our class on church and ministry administration. Let's pray, and we will start. Father, we thank you for this opportunity to be together. And we pray that as we learn these practical things, uh, you will help each of us to understand and uh, to make use of these things in our ministry, in our serving you and serving people. We thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right. So last week we were talking about staff management and uh, we'll continue from where we paused and please feel free to ask any questions um, that you may have uh, in how we um, handle, manage people and so on. So we're on page number 24 in our uh, lecture notes. We were talking about, um, you know, how we, uh, we we stopped here when we talked about employee compensation, uh, how we pay people, and um, we do it based on, of course, what the organization can afford, skills, competencies, responsibilities, and so on. And also, we give them some other benefits and. Then we stopped here when we say, you know, why would people want to work for a church or a ministry? Uh, there are these intangible benefits, right? So even though we may not pay as much money as a corporate, uh, there are other benefits. People have the satisfaction of doing work for kingdom or the work of God. Uh, they have opportunity for involvement in missions. Uh, and uh, workplace culture is very different. Uh, it's uh, it's something that you know we pray together and worship God together and, and so on. And uh, we try to help people have uh, a good balance uh, time for other things and so on. Right. So there are at one. So there, these are these are kinds of things that would draw people to work for a church or a ministry. Yeah, okay, they may not have, they may not make as much money, but these things are important for them, doing something for kingdom and for growing and so on. Okay. Um, now, I do want to say that just because we are a church, uh, we shouldn't uh, pay people less, when we, especially when we can afford to. We shouldn't pay people less in the name of being a church or a ministry. And that is something I feel very sad because, you know, many times I interview people, they are working in, actually they are working in big organizations, big Christian organizations. So before, and as part of the interview process, we ask them, what is your salary? And sometimes I'm very sad because they get, they get so little, you know. But they're actually working for a, uh, working for big Christian organizations, which actually have money, but they're paid very little. I feel sad about it because that's not right. You know, just because we are a church or a Christian organization, we should we shouldn't use that as a reason to pay people less. Pay what you can afford. Like if you have the money, uh, put it into taking care of the people, give them a good salary, so on. All right, let's, let's go to page 25. Uh, employee management. So one of the biggest things in a church or ministry is how to take care of the people who are working in the organization. Because uh, people have feelings. People also want to, you know, they have certain expectations. How do you take care of them? Uh, we can't just say, ah, this is Christian organization, you come and work, you know, you're serving God, just do. You can't just say that. They have, they're people, they have expectations. They also want to grow, they want to learn. And so we have to take care of them. So how do we keep them motivated? How do we keep them excited? They shouldn't get bored uh, doing the work, right? So what, what can we do? 
give them meaningful work. Right? So work that they enjoy, they find useful, meaningful, they find purpose in doing it. You know, if they see it, yeah, you know, example, we have people working in our warehouse who their job is okay, they're packing books. It can be very tiring, boring. But when they understand that, hey, these books are going to go and help somebody, then it becomes meaningful. Hey, my packing the book, I have to pack it well, make sure books don't get uh, destroyed by the time they go wherever. And these books are going to help somebody. Then it becomes meaningful. What my work, what I'm doing is actually helping somebody somewhere. You know, so we try to make sure that they understand that. Uh, give them freedom to make choices, to make decisions. So then people feel empowered. Of course, you are there to help guide them. Uh, they can come to you if they have questions. But they should also be free to make decisions. right? And of course, if they're, if they're going to make a wrong decision, you try to, hey, don't do that. That's dangerous. You know? You're know, you there to watch and guide, but give them freedom. Yeah, you make the decision. Go ahead. Fine. You know. Then they feel empowered. Like, yeah, I'm in charge. I, I, like, I can do this. Um, I provide work that leverages competencies. That means that makes use of their strengths. What are they good at doing? Right? Make use of that. Uh, provide work that encourages personal growth. That means they should keep learning, you know, developing new skills, new challenges. So just yesterday, actually, maybe uh, maybe about a month back, I met with one of our staff, and I challenged them to work on some things. Uh, that time it seemed it almost seemed like I was pushing them to work on certain things, but he went. He was, did it. Yesterday we had a meeting. Then he came back. Then he said, "Thank you so much for telling me to do this, because now I learned so much." You know. So for him it was like stretching into a new, new thing. So one month ago when I told him to do it, it seemed like, "Oh, this is too much." You know. Why is he telling me to do this all? But one month after one month after doing the work, he came. We had a meeting. So oh, thank you so much because I, you know, it's it is it, even though it was challenging, it was for him. He said, "I learned so much." He's excited now about his job, excited about his work, and uh, all the things that can, you know, how the church and the ministry can benefit. So you have to push people in a in a nice way to learn new things, uh, develop new skills, and they will see the direct impact on God's work. They are learning new things, they are developing new skill, and how it is impacting the kingdom. And then they will be very excited. You know, and then you thank them for their progress, you highlight their progress, say, hey, we're we, we are making improvement, we're growing, you're doing well. Um, uh, you involve people in making decisions, you know, so uh, they feel part of the decision making process, the direction in which the church or the ministry is growing. Uh, enforce, uh, provide positive reinforcement, affirm what they're doing, thank them for what they're doing, appreciate for what they, uh, them for what they're doing, give them the resources they need. So you're providing you know, reinforcement, visible appreciation, trust. So I trust you, you can, you can do this. Uh, you coach them with feedback, you inspire them through your leadership. So all of these things are very important to keep people motivated then they get excited about their work right even if sometimes the work is hard or sometimes the work is routine same thing i'm doing yeah but they you know when you when you uh, motivate them they feel uh, excited about their work and also be mindful about what could demotivate people if there's employee turnover that means a lot of people are leaving the organization no then other people get motivated demotivated why those two people left so what is wrong something is wrong here so now we cannot prevent people from leaving uh, and people leave for many different reasons um, but uh, one is we try to make sure people don't leave Sometimes it, it is unavoidable. But when they leave, make their leaving also a celebration. Make it a very positive thing. So every time when a staff leaves, is leaving, we have a little, uh, like a farewell. Small thing, not big thing. We have cake. 
the other thing, we tell them to share about their time with us. OK, they might spend so many years. How was your experience? What are you going to do next? So they share. They talk to all of us. And we pray for them and send them. So we make it a positive experience that, that the leaving is, is for their good. You know, sometimes, or not sometimes, but several people have left because they go abroad. They get, you know, positions abroad. We bless them and send them. They're going for something better. OK, bless them, send them. And, but in our minds, we know when somebody leaves, other fee people feel a little bad. Like why he's leaving, you know? That is there all the time, you know, when somebody leaves. So we have to be mindful about that. If too many people are leaving, then people will get very discouraged. Other people feel demo demotivated. So we have to manage that. If the culture in the workplace is not good, then that will also demotivate people. So I'm very, I'm very watchful how we interact. If anybody's be behaving rude, if anybody's playing politics, if anybody is not treating the other person well, I'm uh, very strict with them. And I'll just, no, cannot do that. Because the culture is very important. We should have a healthy culture where we are friendly, we are supportive, uh, no playing politics, everything is in the open, everything is discussed openly in front of everybody, be honest, be trustworthy, keep that culture, a uh, healthy workplace culture, then people will enjoy working. But if you're speaking behind people's back, we are putting people down, uh, all that, you know, the very toxic culture, people won't like to work, they leave, right? So you have to watch over that culture, uh, the thing. So uh, uh, that we'll talk more about it later. Uh, reorganization. So every time we reorganize, and some, and, you know, and we have to come from time to time re move people around. Uh, that could demotivate sometimes. If there's too much work. It could be demotivating, or some people uh, are demotivated because of personal challenges. And that time you have to support them, help them, find out. You know, maybe they are going through some financial problems or family problems. And we try to support them. You know, okay, you go sp spend time with family, whatever. So we have to be aware. What is happening? How to how to care for them? Right? Then people feel happy to work for the church, work for the ministry. Yeah, you all believe so with me? Any questions? Um, hi, Pastor Ravli here. Oh, this. Um, okay. Yes, Ravli. Sorry. Um, Pastor, when we are talking about culture um, and. Uh, uh, so how do we take a feedback? So if someone is coming in and uh, giving a feedback, uh, especially uh, maybe like, you know, the people working in the church uh, saying that uh, this is something that you might not be observing from your perspective because uh, but people outside may be affecting due to the things. So if someone comes and gives a feedback about anybody in case when we are running an organization, mm -hmm. how do we take it? Is it like a, a one time or we will be looking into it multiple times from multiple sources? So how do you how do you handle that feedback that you get for your uh, colleagues? I mean, Stop, right? Yeah. Yeah. So feedback is important. And, you know, so we we keep it open. So right from so one of the example one is we intentionally we set up this email ID feedback at apc.org so people can email to us or sometimes we'll come and give us feedback but every feedback uh, we have to evaluate it because sometimes an individual's feedback can be just their point of view it's not you know it's their opinion right uh, it's not necessarily so, so we we we, are wel we welcome feedback that means we like to have the feedback that people send but we have to evaluate the feedback you know is it does it really merit action uh is it just one person's opinion uh you know and uh or is it just uh an interpersonal conflict right so Maybe they something happened between that person and one of our staff, and therefore they're giving feedback. But that's a very very specific thing. It's an interpersonal conflict. It's not something that everybody has a problem with, right? So I think uh, the answer to your question first thing is we evaluate the feedback. What exactly is it? 
does it merit action does it or is it just very very subjective uh, if it's a very subjective thing then we we make you know if and if it requires a conversation we'll have a conversation with the person involved that means with, with our staff uh, share that feedback and say hey this came from so and so uh, this is it but okay it's okay just be careful there uh, it may not be affecting everybody else right it's not something uh, affecting everyone but if it is a feedback that's affecting many people like let's say we've heard the same thing from three or four people then we know that something that one of us are doing is wrong it's affecting many people so it's not just one person's subjective experience or opinion but it is coming from three or four very different people then that's a feedback we definitely want to pay a lot of attention to we need to take action and depending on the nature of the feedback you know we the 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 whatever correction we need to take will be relevant to that right so to answer your question one is we evaluate the feedback does it merit an action because, and especially if it comes from one person then it's really we don't give too much weight to it unless it's something very serious uh, if it's a misdemeanor if it's an inappropriate behavior then we take it seriously right? but if it's just like okay they're not serving tea properly not enough sugar in the tea you know those kinds of things you know or uh, then we don't pay too much attention to those things uh, because it's very subjective so that's one thing the second thing is is it coming from multiple people you know if there are more there are more than one you know, there are three or four people giving the same feedback, then it's significant, right? So we have to evaluate the feedback, determine what the problem is. If it's a serious problem, we take serious action. Uh, if it's a not so serious thing, um, yeah. Because people have so many different perspectives on a situation, right? So it doesn't mean that every feedback is critical. Uh, it's just a person's individual's perspective, and uh, we, it doesn't mean we have to take action on it. Yeah. Did I answer your question, Ravali? Yes, Pastor. Thank you so much. Yeah. And if you go biblically, um, first, first Timothy chapter five, um, Paul writes to Timothy. He says, "Against an elder, do not receive an accusation unless it's in the mouth of two or three witnesses." Um, and them who are sinning rebuke before all that others also may learn and be uh what to say uh, let me give you the exact verse first timothy chapter 5 yeah um verse 19 uh 19 to 21 right first timothy 5 19 to 21 sorry so paul says you know do not receive an accusation against an elder from two or three except from two or three witnesses so if it is if it is a you know uh, some accusation against a leader uh, you need to have at least two or three witnesses right it's not just one person's opinion or perspective or experience you need that two or three witnesses who are corroborating that same thing and verse 20 if that person is continuing in sin continuing to do the wrong thing then you take action you rebuke you correct and uh, everything has to be done uh, without partiality and so on. So we try to follow this, um, you know, so as far as uh, leadership is concerned, elders are concerned. Yeah. So how many people are giving feedback? What is it? So on and so forth. And sometimes the feedback could be simply because they don't have enough information. You know, I remember when we had um, an open house, this was... Uh, I think during the COVID times, uh, we did we did an open house. Basically, we said you, you know anyone can ask any questions, you know. But if you want to, give, if you want to, you can give us your questions before. At that time, uh, so one week or actually not one week, but like I think two days before the open house Zoom call, people were sending in their feedback questions, and one feedback was at that time. Uh, APC is not doing enough online, digital online. We are not doing enough. Other churches are doing so much, and they were mentioning other churches. But APC is not doing enough. You know? So I was surprised because I thought, like, hey, we were actually leading the way 
in the online thing because we were the first to start children's church online. We took our services online and uh, all of that. But I was surprised to receive this kind of a comment. But I realized that, you know, and of course, we prayed, I prayed about it and so on. And I said, OK, you know, in response to this question, let us present the data. Because maybe it's coming from a place not having enough information. So when we had the open house, that was the first question we responded to. And we shared the data. So look, this is the data. We were the first church to start. And this was during COVID time. You know, OK, online. We were the first one to start um, um, children's church online. We, APC, released a church app in 2017. That was like six years before. And we started doing daily devotional six years before because this person was quoting, you know, other churches are having daily uh, things happening. I say we started that six years ago, right? And it's been going on every since that. We started in sorry, 2017, and this was COVID time was 2021. So that was four years ago that time. So uh, then we showed them how what's happening on our website. We give them show the data, like so you look at the, what's happening. People from every nation on the earth are coming to our church website and using the resources. And these are numbers. So when we presented all that, uh, oh, then they understood you know, that we are actually doing a lot online. So that kind of a feedback was maybe based on a lack of information. And so sometimes we need to share information, and they will understand what's happening. Yeah. Any other questions on? Uh, All right, let's just move forward here. So taking care of our staff is something we have to work on. Um, some of the things that we do uh, is we, from time to time, internally, uh, we do a employee satisfaction, job satisfaction survey. I mean, it's internally. We let our staff and our consultants give feedback. Are they happy with the work, with the different things? So it's a standard questionnaire. Uh, we ask questions about their work. Are they happy? Are they enough work? Are they being stressed? Uh, are they being equipped? So on. And they give us feedback. So we evaluate it. Um, plus, uh, every year, uh, we tell our staff to, so we have a, so twice a year we do review in June and again in December a review of every person's work. In December, it's a formal review. That means they fill out a form uh, where they re they themselves review their own work and they tell us their plan for the next year. So every person writes that document for themselves. And then it is they meet with whoever their leader is. So uh, whoever is heading up that area of ministry, uh, their team members will meet with them. They will review that, so on. So it's a formal review process right so that's a good thing because it's not like okay just do your work no every six months we're reviewing uh the one in december is a board bigger one because we're reviewing the whole year and we are planning for the future year so what is your plan in your work for the next year right so and that is discussed and that is all written down so that way uh we can review and then Throughout the year, I have, I, I, we have regular review meetings. This will not be uh, you know, very formal. It's informal. I sit with them, talk. You know, How is it happening in this area? For different people, like those who are working directly with me, others will meet with those who are working with them. How is your work going? What, is, what are you doing? Giving feedback. So that happens you know, on week to week, month to month happening. That's informal, but it's regular. So we do that. Uh, now, one big problem or big challenge is how do you handle underperforming employees? That means what if a staff is not doing their job? That is a problem because we can't be harsh. We can't simply say, you're fired, one month notice, go, goodbye. We can't do that. We want to help them. And yet, at the same time, we know that them not doing their work properly may be affecting so many things. 
right so it is it is a difficult situation not easy so usually when a person is not performing well we have to have conversation and sit down and talk now i have to say this that for me as a pastor or as a leader these are things i think about in the night it's, it affects me it means at night i'm you know i'm thinking about that person like okay what to do you know because it's it's not easy because uh, these are if you ask me what keeps you awake at night and <laughs> these people problems right especially when people are not doing their work people are doing their work i don't even think about them it's like hey, they're all good very happy you know but it's the people who don't do their work they are the ones who keep me up at night and it's not their fault but i'm thinking what do i do how do how do i handle this situation right because because work has to be done and sometimes it can be very critical role right where them not doing the work is affecting many other things in the church so it's difficult now at the same time we can't just go and say uh, you're fired and it's not easy to find somebody also you know because to find another person who will come who wants to work for church who has those skills or who has at least that background and who can do that is also not easy so those are the things that if you ask me what is it that keeps you awake at night this one people are not doing their work well because i'm thinking what to do yeah so um yeah you have to have conversation talk to them uh tell them see this is where things are not good this is where things you need to improve these are the problems that are happening because you're not doing your job well you know it could be the congregation something in the congregation is being affected we are not able to serve the congregation properly or internally other people's being affected we need to have the conversation we need to find out what is lacking you know don't is it because you don't have the skills is it because you're not happy with your work is it because uh, something else you're being distracted what is it we have to find out what is the problem try to help them right so um it is not a easy thing and sometimes we try to change their role okay maybe this role is not the best why don't you try this we'll give you 3 months try here if they're okay we move them see and if they don't perform still then again it is a problem because we tried here we tried now another role it's not working what do we do right so these uh, this this particular area is i think most difficult and i've tried some people have tried you know uh, over maybe for a whole year we would try give them chance here give them feedback move them to another place give them feedback it's still not working then we have to make the difficult decision of saying sorry you know we have to let you go because it's not working out right it's not that they are bad people it's just that they're not suited for this role and they're not able to do what is needed and then we have to find somebody else right but at least we try it right we try to help them we try to give them other opportunities if possible thanks for that sometimes we may not be able to give them other opportunities maybe they don't have skills for other things so then we just have to say i'm sorry you know we'll give you things and we try to make it as um as uh, what to say as 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 good as possible like usually even though we have to give only them according to our doc, um staff document we have to give them only one month notice sometimes i will give them two months extra you know i'll say okay take this two months and you start looking for a job you know uh, we will encourage them you look for a job you send me a resume i'll try to share it with other people so we try to help them transition in a in a easy way so try to be as kind as good as possible in that but that is a very difficult area but the thing is you have to make the tough decision right if the work is not being done at some point you have to say this is the end uh it's not happening okay um face to face meetings to address difficult 
matter. So this is one mistake. Uh, in the early days, I made mistakes. I remember there was one person who was working for us. Uh, she was working, I think, uh, she, her role was content writer. Now, she was part of our South Church, so, and she was living, you know, like in uh, uh, beyond Jainagar, somewhere Bangalore South. So, and this was in the early days, and we gave her permission to work from home. Okay, you don't come to our office was in Artinaga those days. So we said, you don't have to come. This was all before COVID, <laughs> to work from home. It's okay, you don't have to come to the office. You work from home, country writing, you can write from there only. Uh, and do it. so she was doing her work and all. Uh, and of course, she had corporate experience. So she, you know, I don't know how many years, but she had worked in the industry. Then she joined us. But her work was not like, it was not, it was not being productive. Like I was not seeing results. And I remember those early days, you know, I, I gave feedback once and uh, once or twice gave feedback, you know, I need to see work being done and all that. And finally, I just sent her an email, you're dismissed. And that upset her so much. Now, in my mind, I was thinking, see, why should I call her all the way from, she's living so far away. And that time, I think she had a baby and all that. Why should I call her all the way from there to come to office just to tell her, hey, I'm giving you 30 days. It's the end. So I just wrote it in an email. But that was a big mistake. Right? And I learned, and I, and I did that a few times. Like to, you know, uh, then I realized that is not the way to uh, dismiss people. You know, as far as possible, meet with them in person. Because this is a difficult news, right? But I made those mistakes. And that person, that, that particular lady, was, she was very, she was a young lady, she was very hurt. And uh, eventually they left church also. <laughs> but it was my mistake. You know, I was just, I thought, in my mind, I was thinking, why should I tell them come all the way from there to office uh, just to tell her that, look, I'm not happy with your work. I'll give you 30 days. Uh, you find another job. For well, that why I just wrote an email, but it hurt her a lot. And um, uh, and after I, I that wasn't that was not the only time I made that same mistake a few times in those days, and then I realized, hey, I shouldn't do like this. Difficult conversations I should have in person, right? So as, unless they are. They're not in town. Like if they're in another city, I can't tell them come. But if they're in the city, it's okay, you come. Let us sit and talk. Difficult conversations, have it in person. Uh, and after that, you send an email. Then it's okay, right? But as far as possible. And if can't, nowadays we have Zoom and all that. So at least we can connect on Zoom and or online and do it. Those days, uh, that was not so common. But anyway. Um, so I learned, you know, difficult matters always sit and talk. So even now, even now, for example, today after this class, when I go to the office, I'm going to have a meeting with two of our staff. It's addressing a difficult situation. Okay, let us sit and talk. Some mistakes happen. Some people were in the congregation were affected. So we're going to sit and talk. So what could we have done differently? Why didn't we care for them? How should we change? It's a difficult question. So we don't do that on email. Come, let us sit and talk. You know, so both of them are coming. We'll sit and talk. So it is a learning. It is a learning process. Right? If it's a difficult matter, sit and talk together. Uh, then, OK, you can follow up with email and other things. Right? Um, another thing is to put everything in writing. So this is also important because Sometimes we will, you know, we forget, they also forget. And said, I don't know what you said. I don't know what we discussed. Oh, what did we say? What did you say? Oh, it's, it is like we have no record of it, right? So you have a meeting, discuss it. Then, especially important matters, put it down in an email, right? Put it in writing so that uh, we have a record of what our plan was, what we decided to do and so on. So these are some uh, things that we need to uh, be mindful about. Right? 
Um, now, uh, at church office, for all our staff, now we try to see how we can develop all our staff. Right? So some, some of the uh, learning and development approaches we take, of course, is on-the-job training. So many of our people, they learn things on the job. Now, as new people join us, we give them time to go through a learning process. We train them um, on the job training, whether they are pastors or whether they are the ministries, you know, so they're all learning. Uh, uh, then, of course, nowadays uh, we can also, we also encourage them to do online courses. Uh, we have an allowance of 10,000 rupees for every staff every year. You can use it however you want for your own learning. Um, so, uh, if they want to do online course or something, they can use that and tell us what they did it for and show us the proof that, like the certificate of completion, then we cover that expense. Uh, we allow our staff to attend Bible college courses. You know, uh, So, some of us, for example, now Vinay uh, and also Sam Matthews, John Paul last year. So they were staff, but we also let them attend our college. Yeah, and uh, so we, as part of their you know, learning and uh, education, and we let all our staff. It is open to all staff. All staff can take, um, I think, uh, one or two courses every semester as part, and it'll be counted as work hours. But not everybody does it. But it's available. Like if you want to take, you can, and it'll be considered as part of your work. Um, weekend schools, so all our staff can attend weekend schools, uh, and that would be considered as part of their work as well. So we are giving them all these options. However you want to keep learning, uh, you can do it. And um, within the organization also, we, uh, we let them handle new projects, new assignments, increase responsibilities, new roles. So these are different ways by which we help them grow professionally. Uh, and so on. Sometimes we have to push them, you know, to do new things, and so on. Um, our performance appraisals, yeah, uh, we we I already talked to you about it. And um, among our staff, among staff, yeah, there are difficult situations. The approach we take is we give them two plus one. Two times we will warn them. Third time, it's. Uh, like dismiss and end of story, right? So we take a three strike approach. We, especially if it's work performance, right? We give you one feedback, another feedback. If there's no change third time. If this repeats a third time, it's the end of story. Or even certain behavior, right? Uh, like okay, you, if they cause the problem once, give them feedback. If they cause the same problem again, give them feedback. If they cause the same problem third time end of story. They're dismissed. Right? So we take that. Means we're giving you two warnings. If you repeat again, third time, you know, we dismiss. Some situations will result in immediate termination. So there are some situations, especially uh, behaviors things, which if it happens, immediate termination right? among our staff. For example, if uh, I get to news, one of our staff was drinking. There are no, no three chances. <laughs> it's like immediate, right? Because it is already in, the, already in our staff guideline. No drinking, no smoking, like that. You know, it's immediate. There, there is no grace. Because you had already been warned. Before you joined us, we told you, these are things you cannot do. So if we get a report, so step down. Yeah, yeah dismissed. Um, so I remember once, and this is a difficult situation that happened in, in our church office, you know. Uh, there were two married people, both were church staff, and they started, they got into a relationship in the church office. So when I first suspected it, like, I mean, there was no clear evidence, but when I first suspected it, I called the guy, I met with him, I said, see, you are a married person, she has two children, now uh, her husband had passed away, but she had two children, and you are a married person, you have two children, 
husband her, for her husband is passed away. Yeah, she can get married, but she can marry somebody who's not married. Now you, this is not right. So I gave a warning because I didn't have any proof. It is only like I was, you know, like the way they were spending time talking, all that. I said, be careful. You are a married person. You have two children. She has two children. Yes, her husband passed away. Be careful. And I know both the families. They're both from church only. Uh, this lady, we hired a staff because her husband had passed away and all. We're trying to help her. And uh, uh, I knew her husband very well. He was a close friend. And we're trying to help her. You know, it's a very painful situation, all that. Okay, I understand. I gave one warning. Then I get a call. Maybe like after I gave the warning, I think. In a short time, maybe within the month, I get a call from this man's wife. Pastor, even after he comes home, he's always on the phone with that lady. And I asked him, and he's saying he's doing work. And I said, both of them are in different, <laughs> doing totally different things. He has no business talking to her. Then I knew something was. Because now the complaint has come from the wife. So I didn't want to deal with this in front of everybody. So I told them all. I, uh, I, uh, I told this man, I told his wife to come on a Saturday. I told this lady to bring her daughters and come on Saturday. So they came. Uh, first, I listen to so i listened to the wife and she was she gave me all the days coming home he's just talking to this other lady uh, or he just she gave me all the details so it's like very clear then i called the lady's two daughters come so they're teenage daughters what is that so yeah same thing i'm sitting talking so from both sides, confirmed. Then I call these two people in. Church staff says, is something happening? No, 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 nothing is happening. Hey, I just spoke to your wife. <laughs> I just spoke to your children. They told me everything, what is going on. And both of you are saying nothing is happening. I said, please pack your bags. Leave the church office. Don't come back. I will give you your dismissal letter on Monday, but you're dismissed right now. Finished. So it is very painful. But so what they were doing what was wrong, and yet they're not accepting it. And it's happening, church office, going home, all this. No chance. This moment is your last minute in the church office. Take your things, go. Uh, you know, same. so both were dismissed. A very sad story, actually. Um, you know, and uh, yeah. So anyway, so the point is, there are situations which will result in immediate termination, right? Like this. So this is a serious matter. Work performance related. It's a three-strike approach. Two times we give warning. Third time again, it's a dismiss. Certain situations very serious, you know. Um, and we have to deal with that. And it happens, like, like I said, even in a church setting, uh, these kind of things uh, do happen. Yeah. Question? Sure. Let me pause here. Any questions? Just now, the story you said, Pastor, about that yeah. story. Like, uh, as you call them, and they both are like, not accepting that what they did or what they are doing. Yes. So you immediately uh, fired them. What if, like in that situations, they accept their faults, and they told like they could tell like, uh, okay, pastor, we did this mm. and that. So from now onwards, it will not happen. So in this kind of situation, like what kind of? Correct. Good question. So if they had accepted it, right? Accept it. Uh, we would have said okay. 
you go through some counseling. Because now we need to see evidence that they are genuinely sorry. Because at that time, anybody will say, I'm sorry, 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 and then they go back and continue, right? Then it's no, it's pointless, right? Uh, so it's okay. You take next one month, two months, you don't come to work. You and your wife go through counseling. You know, let us fix this. I need your wife has to come and say he has stopped communicating with that lady. Okay? And the lady also, you know, you and your children should say, okay. so we'll put those conditions, take a break from work. And, uh, you know, we will see if there is evidence that they have, they are genuinely sorry. Because otherwise, it's simply in front of us, they'll say, sorry, sorry, and then start again. It's pointless. Right? Yeah, so we, would, we that could have happened if they had said sorry, and uh, I think we had to put them to this. But they cannot continue in the office for work for at least, you know, one or two. In this case, maybe at least two months. You know, we need to see some serious change. Now, in this particular case that I mentioned, after we dismissed them, I met with them outside church office to see if they were willing to get help. You know, are they willing to change? They were not. They're not. And so it just went off in a different direction. They didn't want any help. And... Uh, so we tried that. I met with them outside church office to see if we could um, at least take care of their families. You know, that they, that, no, they didn't want any help. So, so that's the that's the situation. You know, and even though it is church, it's a little difficult. Yeah. Question answers. Oh, so regarding that situation, let my question. So what happened to that person wife? Okay, so now that uh, so what happened was eventually that man and wife got divorced and he went and was living with this lady. Lady's children went abroad. Lady told the man to leave. So I don't know what happened after that. I think the lady is planning to go to Canada. This man is left with nothing. Like basically right now, that's his condition. Like, so this is after, you know, like so I think what uh, maybe four or five years or something that has gone. But this is the situation. After it's just they never re they refused to get any help. Right now, that other person is in difficulty. A uh, man is in difficulty. Lady and children are fine because her husband had left her a lot of money and all that. So I think, I don't know if she's still in Bangalore or gone to Canada. I don't know what happened. I'm not sure. But I know this man because he came and met me recently again. Uh, he was very, I don't know how repentant he is, but doesn't have a job, is very difficult situation. And I can't just help him. I can't just give him a job. You know, it's not right. And and uh, but he came and met me. Uh, it's a difficult situation. Yeah. Okay. Um, let's pause now. We'll take a quick break and come back. And if there are any more questions, we'll take it. Yeah. Take a break. Thanks. <laughs> 